Well, hey, welcome back. My name's Dave DeBow, and today we're going to be talking about how can I invest my money in real estate? And here's the good news. There are a ton of different ways that you can invest your money in real estate, and it really depends on you. What are your goals? How involved do you want to be in the real estate business? How active do you want to be? Do you want to be active or passive? What kind of financial goals do you have? Are you looking for cash flow or pops of cash? We'll be taking a look at all of this and more in today's episode. So today, when it comes to how can I invest my money in real estate, we're going to be looking at a variety of different things, and really getting crystal clear on what your goals are. Are you looking for short-term gains? You're looking for long-term gains? Are you looking to be passively investing? Are you looking to be actively investing? We'll get clarity on that. We'll look at the pros and cons of each and what the profit potential is. And if you want to be active about this, how to really scale your real estate investing business. All right, first of all, let's take a look at what are your goals when it comes to real estate investing? What are you really looking for? Are you looking to make quick pops of cash? So just some being able to get in and out of a deal quickly and make a nice little pop of cash. Are you looking for something that's going to supplement or perhaps even replace your income? So are you looking for passive income or cash flow? That's going to determine what you're going to be doing. And are you somebody that wants to be hands-on, super involved in something and increasing your returns on your investment? Or do you really want to just kind of sit back and be passive about it? So that really determines what kind of real estate investing you're going to be doing. If you want to be getting quick pops of cash, you probably want to be looking at something like doing a flip. A flip is where you buy a property under value, you fix it up, you sell it for a profit, or you invest with somebody who's doing that. So if you want to be active in that and making the highest return on your investment and your time, you're going to be the active investor. If you want to be passive, then you're going to be a passive investor, just putting your money into those kind of deals with somebody who's actively doing it. Now, on the other hand, if you're looking for cash flow, if you're looking for residual or passive income, then you want to be doing something that's generating cash flow. You want to be doing something like long-term rentals. There's all sorts of different things you can look at there. You can buy a single family home and rent it out. You can buy a single family home, put a secondary suite in there. Now you've got two units and you're renting those out and you're increasing your cash flow that way. You can take a single family home or a condo or a townhouse and furnish it and then use it as a short term or a medium term rental. Typically you get much higher rents for those kind of properties. So that increases your cash flow. If you're actively doing that, you're gonna be, if you're putting your own cash and your own time into it, that's gonna maximize your return on investment. However, sooner or later, you're gonna run out of cash and credit to do more deals. You might wanna bring on investor partners. If you wanna be passive on that, you might wanna be somebody else's joint venture partner or investor. They do all the work, you put in the cash and perhaps the credit and you share the profits with them. That's a very passive hands-off investment. But again, you're going to be lowering your return because somebody else is doing all of the work for you. So really, in order to see how can you invest your money in real estate, you need to get crystal clear clarity on what do you want? How active do you want to be in this? What kind of returns are you looking for? Are you looking for quick pops of cash or cash flow? So take that into account first. And when it comes to how you can invest your money in real estate, one of the things that you really need to do, whether you're gonna be a passive or an active investor, is to get educated. Get educated about what you're gonna be doing or what you're going to be investing in when it comes to real estate investing. So don't just charge in like a bull in a china shop and hope for the best. Take a little bit of time, take a little bit of effort, and learn about what you're going to be doing, especially if you're gonna be an active investor. Number one, figure out what strategy fits your needs and your goals best. Again, po quick pops of cash or long-term cash flow. Then pick one strategy and learn everything you can about that. Ideally, get training, get coaching, get mentoring, perhaps even joint venture with somebody else on one of their deals to get hands-on experience with doing those kind of deals. Get educated first. That's super important. Even if you're going to be a passive investor, Maybe you don't have to dive in that deep, but you should have a good gist of what a good deal looks like. So it's ideal if you attend a local real estate investment club or a RIA or a meetup group, learn what other people are doing and what constitutes a good deal. And then when somebody brings an opportunity to the table for you, 
you can analyze it, you can look at it, and you can decide for yourself whether it's a good deal or not, and not just depend on the investor's opinion. Now, if you wanna be an active real estate investor, then you need to do a lot of things. You need to get education, you need to get experience, you need to get coaching and mentoring and training about this. That's what I highly recommend anyhow. And then you need to get going and do some deals. Now, at the beginning, if you are able to self-finance your first deal or two, I highly recommend that. Why? For a couple of reasons. Number one, you're gonna pay super close attention to that deal because you've got financial skin in the game. You've got your own hard-earned, hard-saved money in that deal. So you're gonna be watching everything. You're gonna be watching everything like a hawk to make sure everything's going properly. So that is an absolutely great way to get going. The second reason is because down the road, when you are looking to bring on investor partners, they might say, well, how much money are you putting into this deal? And you can say, well, you know what? I'm not putting any money into this deal. And when they say, why not? Because I've already got all of my money tied up in these other deals. That's why I'm bringing this to you as an opportunity to partner up with me, right? That makes sense. So you wanna make sure, if you can, get going with your own deals, with your own capital. Now, does that mean you have to have a lot of cash to get going in real estate? No, if you don't have a lot of cash, then you can partner up with somebody who's actively doing what you wanna do and put in some sweat equity. Bring some value to the table. You're probably not gonna do a 50-50 type deal that way, but even if you get five or 10% of that deal in exchange for your efforts, you've got one under your belt. You've got something you can point to, to a prospective investor or a joint venture partner and say, hey, here's what I've done, here's how, how it worked out, and it's a legitimate deal because you were involved in it. Now, once you get to the stage where you're ready to start scaling and growing your portfolio, you're going to have to start bringing on other people's money. You're gonna run out of cash, you're gonna run out of credit to keep growing under your own financial steam. So if you bring on joint venture partners or investors, you can use their capital and their credit and then you share in the deal and that way you can scale your portfolio as big and as fast as you want to. It's all about using other people's money. Now, one of the big tips for using other people's money is to focus on your existing connections, your existing contacts, your existing sphere of influence. I mean, think about it. If you're trying to raise capital from somebody, in order for somebody to invest 50, 75, or $100,000 with you or more in a deal, that person needs to know you, they need to like you, and they need to trust you with their money. So if you're going out to your existing network, those people already know you, they already like you, to a certain degree, they already trust you. Now you just have to show them what's in it for them to invest in a real estate deal with you. I tell you what, that is so much easier. It's so much faster and so much safer than just going out to the general public to strangers trying to raise capital. And I tell you what, I see this all the time. I see people on social media pitching their deals to everybody and anybody with a, with, with a heartbeat, right? And that's a big mistake for those first reasons, plus the safety side of things. Now, caveat here, little time out. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a security specialist. I'm a real, real estate guy and a marketer. I'm just sharing my understanding of things. For you and I, as a mom and pop real estate investor, it is not only dangerous, but it could be illegal for us to go out to the general public trying to solicit investors. Because if you're in the States, you've got this little thing called the Securities and Exchange Commission. Each state has its own regulatory authority. In Canada, each province has its own provincial regulatory authority. And they pretty much all say the same thing. They all say it's illegal for you and I as a mom and pop to raise capital from the general public unless we're already licensed to do so. So somebody who's licensed to do so would be like a stockbroker or a financial planner. They tend to work for big companies like banks and financial companies and they can take funds from strangers and invest them. But we aren't licensed to do that. The other thing they say is, well, you can raise capital from the general public if you're set up properly, if you've got exemptions, if you've got certain offering memorandums or corporate structures set up, then yes, you can do that. However, for you and I, as a mom and pop real estate investor doing smaller deals, that's very expensive, very time consuming, a lot of red tape, very cumbersome. And it really doesn't make sense for smaller deals. So the fastest, easiest, safest capital that you and I can go after is from within our existing network, our friends, our family members, our coworkers, business associates, etc. People that we already have that pre-existing relationship. That's who you need to focus on first. 
Now, a great example of this, how can I invest my money in real estate, comes from a client of mine, Dr. Osama. Now, Dr. Osama was a very busy doctor as, a, as his profession, so he was actually a passive investor in other people's deals for quite a few years. And then Dr. Osama retired, and he kind of got bored, and he wanted to get more actively into real estate investing. So he did. He used his own capital, and instead of investing with other people, he bought his own deals. He, he put the money down for down payments, he got qualified for financing, and he built up a nice little portfolio. But then, like everybody, he hit that wall. He ran out of cash, he ran out of credit. Now, it took him a little bit longer than some of the rest of us because he was a doctor, but it happens to everybody. So then he looked at, well, how can I keep growing? How can I keep growing my portfolio? That's when we started working together, and we really, really focused on his existing network. We created a list of a couple of hundred prospective investors. We broke the ice with them. We got the information out. We got the constant, consistent communication going. And very, very quickly had people putting up their hands saying, hey, Dr. Osama, I'm interested. Let me know more about your deals. You walk them through a very simple presentation and got them unrolled. And now he's been able to scale his portfolio using other people's money by focusing on his existing network. And you can do the same thing. Now, speaking of finding investors raising capital, if you'd like to get the same kind of results as Dr. Osama, then follow the same process he did, and that's called my Money Partner Formula. If you'd like to get a free copy of the book, go ahead, click on the link that's in the description below, or you can go to InvestorAttractionBook.com, and this will walk you through my entire process for determining exactly who are your ideal investors, where are they located, how to get the word out, how to get them coming to you instead of you chasing after them, how to present your deals in the best possible light to get the maximum capital available to you. So again, go ahead, get your copy today.